Day number five in Portugal calls for a monastery. And this one's pretty damn nice. I've got to make it to the main square and then catch a train, or sorry, a bus down to the area of Bellum. A bus stop in the middle of the building? I don't think so. And then that stop right there is apparently only for Grey Line buses. So I don't know what the heck Google is doing. All right, and this could be it. There's a whole bunch of buses coming here. Finally, my 748 bus is rolling up here. There's the monastery. Oh, look at the line here. Uh oh, not good. Apparently I might get in for free with this one and bypass this whole line. Let's see if this works. No luck, I still have to wait in this line. This monastery the monks were under an order called the Order of Saint Jerome and basically they prayed or especially was praying for the king and sailors taking care of sailors I guess it's because it's so close to the port it was created in the 16th century you got icons of ships up here carved into this amazing design No dogs. Well, here it is, the tomb of Vasco da Gama. Look at his ship right there. The weird thing is though, you enter through the other side, so most people actually miss this. And to think about how significant his impact on Portuguese and world history has been, kind of sad that most people miss it. Note that he's also in the praying position. Monastery all done. Now it's time to take a walk up here. All right, here's the next site, Tower of Bellum. I cut my losses here at the Tower of Bellum. That's like a 30 minute wait so far and then just stop moving. So I've got other sites to see. There's no point in actually waiting there. Look at the line. Behind me is another monument. This one's actually for Henry the Navigator. Look at all the people he's leading to the new world. He's got his little tools compass there. One final snack here. Pastis de Bella. And then they shuffle you off to the other side of the restaurant here where it looks like it's a clusterfuck. Everyone just scrambling for their tickets, you hand off, and then you get given your order. Here comes my order. Obrigado. Time to give this an official taste test. So I've had one of these before. This is the legit one. Apparently the top ones you can get Lisbon. Looks really good. 
So it's got a crunchier outside than the previous one I had. As you can see, it's a little toasted here. And the inside is uh, not as sweet, but like better tasting. The other one was too sweet. It was really good. Long wait in line just for one though. If I was here with a bunch of friends, I'd maybe consider buying a six pack or even a 50 pack. That's what they sell them by. It looks like there's limited bus lines on the way back. So this bus. Wow, that bus was crowded. People were getting belligerent too. Two sites left. I got an old ruined church apparently to check out. Let's have a look. This church right here <laughs> dates back to 1225. Barely survived an earthquake back in 1755 and there was a fire in the 1950s. Uh, it's apparently pretty darn awesome inside. Roads are getting steep again. <sighs> the final sight, this ruined church. Last time I missed it by five minutes. This time I got here plenty of time to spare. Covento de Carmo is this place I'm in right now. It was actually built in 1389 and destroyed in a giant earthquake they had in 1755. And then they talked about rebuilding it, but then they abolished the religious order. So they didn't do that. Now they've made it like a museum type of history thing. It's pretty remarkable when you look the ruins up against the sky though, I must say. here and sort of wonder how this all came to be, how they built something like that, how it was to the earthquake. So they're doing restoration work here. So that was weird inside the chapel. They got this big sign right here saying no pictures, no cell phones, no nothing. Like everyone's just sneaking out their phones and grabbing pictures of the place. So I joined in the fun, what can I say? Gotta keep the memory alive. I'm craving a coffee. Sadly, there's not many coffee places in Lisbon. However, when I pulled up Yelp. They said there's one a hundred and something feet away from me that was actually pretty good coffee, so I believe it's right here. Right out outside my grocery store. Vertigo. I'm gonna give this one a try and see how it tastes. This is a cool place. Look, they've got a basement down there with an old rustic look. Look at that ceiling. It looks weird. Now it's just chill time. I am having this local wine, Vina uh, da Manjada, which is a Lisbon wine. I haven't seen many Lisbon wines so far. So good. This was five euros for this bottle, which is kind of pricey for what you see in the grocery stores. They're usually like three euros, three fifty, but it's still cheaper than what we get in foreign North America. This type of quality wine, really good. All right, all done drinking my wine at the hostel. The one I'm gonna go for first is the closest to the hostel. It's a sort of food court type of thing they have set up in summertime outside near the water, and it's the top chefs giving small dishes. So I figure I can hit that up and sample a lot more than I would with a typical restaurant and a typical restaurant order. Here we go, the timeout market. Whoa, it's packed. Selections varying from a chain, 
gelato. This is a snack place. A lot of seafood back in the other area. Breakfast, wine. After much debating, I've decided to go here. I'm getting the traditional grilled octopus, mashed potatoes, and spinach. Quite similar to Shake Shack, you'll see they give you a buzzer. The good sign is she's been recommending everybody get the octopus. So there's one horrible downside of this, and that is and that is that there's limited seating available. So you gotta like grab one as soon as you see it. right across from a train station. Definitely recommend you check it out while you're out here. There's a lot of options. However, I think I went around nine o'clock. That time it's super packed, but if you want seafood, convenient, this is the place to go. Sketchy. Last full night in Lisbon. And there's this cool bar that I had yet to check out. It's called Penso de Amor. It's a formal brothel, and they've embraced the heritage. It's supposed to be a cool atmosphere. This is definitely it. Oh, this is super cool. Check that out. Yeah, they're embracing the brothel heritage. All right, what do they got here? What do they got here? Well, they evidently rate their drinks by a boner system here. We've got a one boner, three boner, and a two boner. I'm going for the Exhibitionista. Passion fruit, jasmine syrup, and lime. Pretty cool. I only stay for a couple drinks because I'm gonna have to be up at about 9 a.m. tomorrow. I gotta get my shit ready to go on a bus. Um, so I got shit to do. Look, that guy tried to sell me cocaine right there. Welcome to Lisbon. Lisbon. 